Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up to the layup, oh, blocked by James! It's over, it's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! That sound means it's time for Cavs of the Break, NBA podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I am your host, Chase Smith, and with me, he's a senior writer at HoopsWire.com. The assistant editor at Outkick.com. He is our Cavs insider, national NBA writer, Sam Amico. Sam, the draft lottery is here, and it looks like the Hawks are taking game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, and the Cavs did better in the lottery than expected, um, which, you know, that's really all you're hoping for is to move up a spot, and they moved up too. You know, I'm going to say I had so much joy. It felt like we already won when they went for that 14th pick and there were the Golden State Warriors. Uh, It was just, they did not have a great night, which meant that I was especially happy. But joining us to help us talk about the draft lottery and what the possibilities are, you can catch him on the Kenny and JT show, three to seven Monday and Friday at 1480 WHBC, WHBC. You can also catch him on the Red Guy and Rota podcast here. There you go. Podcasts. Browns and Buckeyes post game show Facebook. Kenny Rota, Kenny, what's up, man? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, good night for the Cavaliers. Not as good as I was hoping. I wanted them to get to two so they would have, uh, you know, complete choice after Cade Cunningham goes to whoever won the number one. But I'll take number three instead of six, seven, or eight, Sam, or maybe even nine. Right? They could have fallen, Sam, yeah. as, as far down as nine. Uh, so it's it's a good position to be in there at number three uh, with uh, almost the pick of the litter. It's the, it's the best pick of Kobe Altman's tenure uh, so far. Yeah, obviously, he started with LeBron, but then you had Sexton, you know, eight, five, and five. Um, this is a good, a good, good place in a, in a, uh, what's supposed to be a very deep draft. Well, let, let's talk about that. Kenny, for as long as we've been working together, we haven't been on the mic a lot together. I, I'm usually behind the scenes making sure things are working well. It, it's, it's great to finally talk shop a little bit. Fellas, let, let's jump into it, the lottery was on Tuesday, June 22nd, and this is how it shook out. Uh, obviously, the Cavs did not have a good a good season last year. That goes without saying. You can listen to our autopsy report, the episode right before this. But here, here is how the draft is going to look here in July. The first pick goes to the Detroit Pistons. The first pick of the – since 1970 – since the 70s, was it 73? Is that, was 19, that what I saw? 1970, and they 19- drafted Bob Lanier. Yep. Holy so smokes. 51 years. Good for them. The, the last highest pick was Darko, I believe, the fourth pick. Yeah, nice job, Joe honor. Dumars, uh, in that <laughs> Hall of Fame draft of, uh, uh, who was it, Dwayne Wade, uh, Carmelo yeah. Anthony, Chris Bosh, and LeBron James. He picks Darko Milicic. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And so <laughs> things are looking really well in Detroit. Sam, we got to get our boy uh, Chris back one. I'm sure I, yeah. him last I knew he was excited. <laughs> he was yeah. pretty pumped. Uh, the Rockets come in at number two, uh, which they are just at the start of a rebuild. This could accelerate that quite a bit. The Cavs come in at three and the Raptors coming in at four. I, I'll tell you what, I, I love that team up North. I was grateful that they were able to knock out the Warriors uh, here a couple years ago. And, and that series they had against the Celtics in the bubble, um, was was pretty fantastic and it's nice to see franchises who work hard play hard kind of get rewarded in the lottery a little bit uh but but sam what are your thoughts with the Cavs uh jumping up to three when, when you were watching that were you nervous were you excited were you like well let's see what happens how, how what was the mind of sam like last night i thought that you know what once once you found out that they had moved up um you know right before the obviously it's televised and right before you go to the break there to, to reveal the top four, you knew the caps were in the top four. And I thought um, if they can get one of the top three and not, I mean, four would be fine, but you, you kind of hope for one or two. Cause like Kenny said, if you're not going to get Cunningham, then you want to have your pick of anybody else. Well, they're, they're pretty close to that. So um, I, 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 when I was watching it, I thought I would be surprised if they end up with one just because they haven't had that kind of lottery luck over the last three years. But um, I thought I thought three was a good spot, a, a great spot in terms of, you know what, in a, dra- in a draft that's supposed to produce talent like this, yeah. uh, 
any one of those top three, four, maybe even five are going to probably be winners. There'll be a bust in there somewhere. You just hope you avoid sure. that. And, uh, you know, it, it, it has seemed that every time the, the Cavs have a high pick and they say, oh, this is a four person draft or a two person draft or a three person draft, right. they're, they're always right. one pick below that kind of <laughs> tier. But Kenny, right. here we are. It is a four player draft and we have pick three sitting pretty. Kenny, what was uh, what was going through your mind when you saw, hey, Cavs are in prime position to really draft an impact player? Well, the way I looked at this draft was there were five players you, you wanted a, a chance at getting. All right. So you wanted to be in the top five. If you dropped below five with Scotty Barnes and some of the other guys, I'm not as I think there there was. There's a huge tier at like one, two, and three. Then there's that second tier of four and five, and then it really drops off after that. And I know Cade Cunningham is, uh, you know, everybody's perennial number one overall pick out of Oklahoma State, and, and I understand why a lot of people like him, and uh, I hope he does go number one, to be perfectly honest with you, to uh, the Detroit Pistons. It'll be interesting to see who Houston goes with at number two, uh, do they go Suggs and get the point guard to run their offense? Do they go big with Evan Mobley? The guy I don't want them to take because it's the guy right now, and I'm still doing research on this, but the guy that I'm leaning towards the Cavaliers taking, Jalen Green. Mm -hmm. and, and Sam, thanks for coming on the Kenny and JT show uh, on WHBC to talk about this. You and I already had a little conversation about this. It's early. And I, I don't want to oversell this or uh, you know be too dramatic about it but I watched about 15 minutes of highlights and granted they're highlights. It's the best that he does right at the G league ignite. I saw, I saw, I, I hate him. I saw a little Kobe Bryant in his game, Sam. He's six, six. He can jump out of the gymnasium. He's athletic. He shot 36% from three point range from the NBA three point line in the G league. And granted it's still the G league, but I'll take the G league competition over you know what uh kate cunningham played against in, in college so uh, i'm a big jalen green guy right now but the one thing that sam and i don't have chase is we don't have the sit downs to talk to him to find out uh you know uh, his intelligent level intelligence level excuse me basketball iq level we don't get those meetings to to find out like the the gms do so that comes into play because jerry west you remember sam jerry west said when he met with kobe bryant he knew when he talked to him and worked them out that they didn't want yeah. anybody else in that draft, uh, mm -hmm. that it was just, he, they were blown away by him. So that helps GMs decide. But, boy, I'll tell you, I love what Jalen Green is all about and what I've seen so far, and he would be a perfect fit, in my opinion, for the Cavs. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. The, the Pistons have the number one pick. Last year, they had the seven pick, and they picked Killian Hayes, a point guard uh, from France, who <sighs> Sam had a, had a great – had a great rookie campaign. Um, yeah. Do you think that's going to sway them from looking at the consensus number one pick, Cade Cunningham, the point guard from Oklahoma, Cade Cunningham? Do you think that's going to alter their plans at all? No, I think that um, Cunningham can play off the ball pretty well. Um, and if you think he's at the top of your board, you always take him. I mean, yeah. you know, people learned that back in 1984 when, when the Trailblazers didn't take Michael Jordan, they drafted for because they said we already we already have a shooting guard in Clyde Drexler. Um, you take because you know what in today's NBA it's <clears throat> really frankly pretty positionless. Um, you can play with two ball handlers on the floor. Um, you can play with two guys who are just shooters, you know, in your backcourt. So I don't think it'll it'll sway them one way or the other. They probably look at it like can't wait to get these two guys as our starting backcourt. Because they were, frankly, they need more guards. I mean, their other guard right now, if you look at their depth chart, is probably Wayne Ellington, you know, in terms of who, who would start next to Hayes. So I think that they would be excited to make these guys work together. I, I, I'd i be stunned if they went in any direction other than they say they're going to, you know, Troy Weaver, their GM, has said, we're going to check out five guys, bring in five guys, do all this stuff and uncover every rock and all that kind of stuff. But he said, right, he admitted right now, Cunningham's at the top of the list. So, um, you know, unless something changes in the, in the draft process that Kenny just talked about in interviews and all that, that blows them away. Um, I think that they'll end up going with, 
going with Cunningham and 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 making that backcourt work together with Hayes. So so he, again, here here's where we're at. The Pistons have the first pick. The Rockets have the second pick. The Cavs have the third pick. The Raptors have the fourth pick. Uh, pretty much consensus that the Pistons will take Cade Cunningham. He's penciled in. You've seen all the photoshops. People are excited. They have a great young core there that people are excited about. And this potentially could just put fuel on that fire. They've penciled in Cade Cunningham at the number one spot, which leads us to kind of begin to think, man, what are the Rockets going to do at two? Uh, they are looking for an identity. They're looking for a direction. They have John Wall, who we know is, you know, maybe a little more seasoned. Um, and if the point guard is off the board, Sam, what, what are the Rockets looking at here at two? Well, I think they're looking, you know, I, I, I frankly think they're going to take Mobley right now. Now, maybe that'll change. My opinion on that will change. But if I'm looking at that right now, um, they – the, the, you know, John Wall's probably not going anywhere for a little bit. Uh, and and Kevin, they got Kevin Porter Jr., you know, but they could use help, mm-hmm. help everywhere. But I think that they will go when you have a big like Mobley who, uh, you know, has drawn comparisons to Embiid and Aiton and those kind of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's the direction they'll go. And uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe Suggs, but. But, or green, but I, I really think right now if I had to make a pick for them, it would be it would be Mobley. I, I, I just think that that's that everybody out of Houston is kind of saying that's who they're leaning towards. Mm-hmm. So, so Kenny, if it does go, if it does go Cuttingham one, Mobley two. I sprint to the podium or wherever the draft is with my card for Jalen Green. <laughs> I, I don't hesitate. I don't wait. I, I, I don't take any phone calls. None of the above. I sprint there and I give that uh, card of Jalen Green, uh, shooting guard, small forward, uh, G League Ignite, and pencil him in the starting lineup as the uh, starting shooting guard in the backcourt with Darius Garland, Isaac Okoro at the three. Uh, Then you've got Kevin Love. If you bring him back at the four, re-sign Jared Allen at the five and trade Colin Sexton there. I've laid it out how the Cavaliers can get better for next year. Kenny says playoffs 2022. (laughs) Hey, Uh, Kobe Altman told me they were on the same path as the Atlanta Hawks, that that was a fair comparison, right? So they're only a year behind. yeah, Yeah. Well, in year four, what did the Hawks do? They just won game one of the Eastern conference finals. So that's what I'm expecting from the Cavaliers next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jalen Green uh, is the remedy to the Cavs' biggest kind of blemish um, on their team, it seems, the three-point outside shot. Um, Sam, I I, I posted a poll on on my Twitter about what they think the Cavs are going to do, and I had four options. I said, are they going to draft Jalen Green? Are they going to draft Evan Mobley? Are they going to draft Suggs and trade a guard? Or are they going to trade down, maybe three, trade down to the Magic for five and eight? Kenny just couldn't contain himself with Jalen Green. Uh, Sam, what if, if you have the power there at three, what do you do? Well, you I, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you answer, and then I'll tell you kind of what the, what the Twitterverse voted. We got over... Okay. Uh, over a hundred votes in like 30 minutes. Okay. I can tell you that, that I'd have to research it a lot more, obviously spending so much time watching the NBA. I kind of, well, yeah, uh, we're like 20 hours post. So this is, this is the point of podcast, man. Like what would you want right now? I would, I would, it would be a toss up for me between green and Suggs. Um, uh, obviously I saw a ton of Suggs. We, a lot of us did because of that NCAA mm-hmm. tournament run. I watched them in their conference tournament, watch Gonzaga. Um, the guy's gritty. He's got, he's so skilled can play either position. Um, the thing that, the, the thing that's his strength that he can play either position also kind of makes you nervous because it's like, is he a point guard? Is he a shooting guard? Uh, you know, but the one thing I liked about the guy is he's obviously a winner um, and, and, and just an amazing talent, but, but, and just very fundamentally sound athletic, but very fundamentally sound. But I, I, I agree with Kenny that green to me has a higher upside because he's, 
unbelievably athletic, um, just plays with great passion, you know, much like Kenny mentioned Kobe Bryant. Um, and I think, I think also he just kind of has that it factor about him that, that, you know, I mean, any guy, he was the first guy to sign out of high school to join that G league, uh, select team. So he's, he's really highly thought of and, and has a huge upside. So it'd be a tough choice for me. I would probably go with green. If I, you know, you're telling me to make a pick right now, I would say Jalen green. Um, assuming Mobley's not available. Mobley might be my guy if he's there. Mm. If if let's say the Rockets take Green, yeah, then then maybe I'd go Mobley. I don't know because what do you do with Jared Allen then in that situation, Sam? Do you still re-sign him? Because the league but, is about three point shooting, not playing two seven footers together yeah. who can't shoot from the perimeter. Yeah, but I, I, Mobley's got a decent shot. He's 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 the problem is you're right, Kenny. You're going to pay Jared Allen you know, hundred million dollars probably. Right. And, um, and yeah, you, you don't want to, you're, if you draft Mobley, you're assuming he can play the four, but right. like you said, this is a league that you have to defend the perimeter is a huge part of what you're doing. And, you know, is he going to be able to go out and guard these stretch fours Mobley? I don't know, but you know, so then you, so then you take, then you take, let's say, let's say Green's gone. Let's say Houston takes Green. Then you take Suggs. You're going to have to make mm. a decision on your guards, and I think you got it right, Kenny. I think that that you know, and people say, well, Kevin Porter Jr. was here, and you weren't going to trade Sexton or Garland, but he was. That's a different situation. Uh, you don't draft a guy at three to bring him off the bench like you did Kevin Porter Jr. You you draft them as you know, a guy who's going to make an immediate impact as a starter. And if you, if you end up drafting green or Suggs, I think you got to move one of your guards. And I don't think that guard you're going to move is Garland. I just don't. I think, I think Sexton's got a lot of value right now. And, and uh, you would, you would have to consider making that call and you could get a guard back for Sexton, you know, wouldn't be the same kind of player, but you could get a guard back um, if you wanted somebody to come off the bench. So, uh, all that said, you know, let's say let's say they're all gone and or Mobley and, and Cunningham are obviously gone in the top two, then I would probably go with Green as well. But it pained me because I, I love Suggs. I really like him as a player and it'd be tough watching him go to Toronto because Toronto's got, you know, they're a lot closer to relevancy than the Cavs are. And uh he'd be the, the perfect fit could help him. Right. He's, the he, Raptors. Well, well, they're going to probably lose Lowry, so he would go right in there. Right, Suggs or Green or whoever would go right in there and start. Probably, you know, get every opportunity to. They'll get the same kind of opportunity that that Isaac Okoro got with the Cavs this year. It's like you're going to play 32 minutes. Go. <laughs> Look, you guys aren't alone in your love for Jalen Green. 56 percent of the voters in this poll said that they uh, would draft Jalen Green at three if he's available. Um, I want to share what I want to do. And and Sam, we've talked about this on the pod all the time. Um, a lot of an NBA is, uh, comes down to, do you have the best player on your team? Um, I think you, you look at what the Suns are doing and uh, night in and night out, it seems like Devin Booker is just the best player on the court. Um, and I think coaching has a lot to do with that as well. But now, now again, we're 20 hours out from lottery. I haven't done a ton of, research on any of these prospects either but what i have seen from jalen suggs even though they lost in the championship um i absolutely love and when you have these players available now i, I haven't watched a lot of jalen green and there and there might be i might see this in his game um but you you draft a player like that and then you just figure it out right you don't want to overcomplicate what this is and if Jalen Suggs is going to be that guy, um, then I would take him just as quickly as Kenny Roto would going up there for Jalen Green. <laughs> and you you trade Sexton or Garland or both and say, hey, this is th- this is your team. And we have picks and a couple outside shooters as well. We got from the guards and and you're off. Uh, I I don't know. I, I really like what I saw from Jalen Jalen Suggs a lot. I. Um, you're, you're convincing me. I'm coming around on Jalen Green. Um, 
He's definitely the guy I'm going to look at the most. Uh, I, I, I really think M- Mobley does fit with the Rockets. Uh, I think we like Allen. I like what Allen can do. Um, I like his defense. Um, and, uh, you know, I like what, you know, I think Kevin Love next year is a contract year. I think that's, that's a tradable piece. I, I don't really see him um, <laughs> providing value for the Cavs outside of a trade piece and like kind of like a little um, lore here, but. Uh, I Suggs is my one Jalen green is my two. And, and that's kind of where we're at. Um, Sam, is there any chance, any chance the Cavs trade down maybe to a team like the magic who do fall in love with one of those guys for kind of two picks in the top 10, maybe Kamanga is still there. Is that the fifth guy um, uh, that they're kind of look that kind of in that conversation? Yeah. Uh, well, Kamanga is really highly thought of. From- I like him too. Everybody I've talked to has said that he's, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously a versatile forward, um, and and so is say a, is an outstanding defender. But I think if you have an opportunity to get a guy that you think can help change the course of your franchise, which yep. they believe these top three picks can do, yeah, then I you agree. take him regardless, and you don't. Mm-hmm. Well, I I I don't foresee the Cavs trading down and getting two guys. I, I really don't. It I, I wouldn't be, I mean, it. aside from missing out on maybe a fr- uh, franchise altering player, I mean, five and eight, that's not a chase. Know. I'm going to stop you based on what Kobe Altman told us last night. Yeah. There are game changers at the top of the draft. Mm-hmm. Okay. This team doesn't have a game changer. I know uh, yep. Colin Sexton scores 24 points a game, but Sam and I were talking before we started the podcast. Did Colin Sexton get invited to team select uh, USA to practice against the, the Olympic team? No, he did not. And he was the leading scorer on the Cavs. You know who did? Darius Garland, because he's a better all-around basketball player at 17 points and about seven assists a game last year in his really his first full year healthy in, in the league. So that tells you who they respect more on the Cavaliers. It's Garland and not Sexton. So when you get a chance to get a game changer, those are Kobe Altman's words, you go get the game changer and you don't drop down hoping uh, you know, swing uh, twice and hope you hit one out of two. No, you go get the guy that you had ranked the highest. No, I, I agree. And we've talked as much about that, Kenny, on, on this pod that, hey, like the Cavs never have the best player. We, they don't have that guy. And so I just want to talk about it. Sam, you, you'd you say there's a less than 1% chance the Cavs. I mean, really, probably not. I would, a- hope, I would hope that they they wouldn't really be considering that only because they don't need two more young guys. They need one really good yeah. young guy. And, um, and I, I mean, I, they have some now, I mean, they have, they have Garland, they have Stexton, they have uh, Okoro who they believe is going to be, you know, uh, a, a starting, a, a good starting caliber, small forward. And I think that we saw flashes of that. And then, um, and then he's going to be a one. great starting caliber small forward. He could, so you, you, you keep... know, I mean, you give it. Of course, is my guy, man. <laughs> but I, you just again, you, we saw the leap that Garland made from his rookie year to his second year. That's true. Maybe Okoro can make you know another huge leap like that. So, oh, it's going to um, happen. And Okoro had a better rookie year than Garland. So, yeah, he made second yeah. team All NBA rookie team. So, congratulations right. to him. So, give Kobe yeah. Altman a little pat on the back for that. Uh, you know, in uh, selecting more of a defensive guy who they're hoping their offense, his offense develops. So, you know, for, here's the one way, Chase, never say never, Sam. I think we've learned that in the, in the sports business, right? <laughs> never say never. So anything is possible. If they think Jonathan, Jonathan Kaminga is their guy, if they think he's the best player that, you know, after uh, Kate Cunningham and they feel they can get him at five, Chase, mm-hmm. and they know – Somehow, some way, you know, you're still rolling the dice, but if you want right. to take that gamble, if they think they can get them at five, then maybe you make that trade down to get five and eight uh, and get an all-star caliber player and a perennial starter for you at eight. Mm-hmm. But that's, you You must like Jonathan Kaminga over Jalen Green and some of the others in order to do that, in my opinion. Yeah. Look, I wouldn't do it, but I feel like it's worth mentioning just briefly uh, because That's not a bad offer. Um, Hey, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Ben Simmons because I heard uh, you guys had some fun today talking about Ben Simmons. We'll be right back. Uh, Stay with us. 
It's not a rumor. It's the truth. Ray Guy and Roder are back together again with the R&R podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We're going to talk Browns. We're going to talk Cavs, Indians, even if they're not playing well, which might happen. We're going to talk monsters. We're going to talk college football. You name it. When it comes to sports, Ray Guy and Rhoda, we're going to break it down for you as only we can. So make sure you join us right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, everybody. I'm Gary. And I'm Jason. Opening the cards as a kid, no matter what was in the pack, you always had that stick of chewing gum. Well, it turns out Gary and I opened up a box of 86 tops last year, and let me tell you, the chewing gum does not age well. Join us on the Ball Card Show, the sports podcast for the sports collector. This is Mike Voorhees, co-host of the Swing and a Tribe MLB podcast. If you love Cleveland Indians baseball, then this is the pod for you. We've got you covered each week as we talk about all the games, breaking news, trades, the roster, all things Tribe. You're going to love it. Go Tribe. For the Dennis Manilov Show, I'll tap into my 40-plus years of following Cleveland sports and 30-plus years of writing and talking about them so as to bring you informed opinions and analysis of your favorite players and teams. I also will monitor the national sports scene and when warranted, step out of the toy department and into the real world. And I'll always be on the lookout for special guests. By all means, join us. Want to hear more about your favorite TV shows and movies that are on countless streaming services? Then listen to Up Next with your new favorite hosts, me, Kristen Aviles. And me, Christina Walter. Every other week, we'll highlight one genre, but two movies or TV shows, one old and one new. We'll let you know what's hot and what's not from your favorite or least favorite streaming services. And be sure to stay tuned to the end of each episode where we shout out an artist whose name you should know for their talent in the industry. So follow us to stay up to date with your favorite hosts from Up Next, a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hi, my name is Jeremy Powell, co-host of the Oranges, Orange, or Browns podcast. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts. For all your Browns coverage, post-game, pre-game, anything you need, Browns, you'll find it here on the Oranges, Orange, or Browns podcast. Hey, it's Tito, host of the Premier Fantasy Podcast. Get all the news and analysis you need to dominate your fantasy league. I've been doing this as long as anybody in the business. I can help give you the edge in your leagues. It's the Premier Fantasy Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. Hey, it's JD from the Hyman Podcast. I created this podcast to have hard conversations. Conversations that make us human but are also wildly uncomfortable. Conversations that help give voice to the voiceless and to the marginalized. Now you can listen to the entire first season on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Consider this your personal invitation to join the conversation. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of Phenomwell CBD Store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, PhenomwellCBD.com. Tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plant can make a difference for people's health and well-being from the Press Play Podcast Network. All right, we're back. Cavs of the Break NBA Podcast here with Sam Amico, Kenny Rhoda. And, this just uh, in, Ben Simmons missed another shot while we were away on break. Uh, yeah, he was practicing in the gym and he missed another two foot jump shot. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Chase? So, but before the jump, we uh, talked about the lottery, maybe what the Cavs are going to do, what we want them to do. Still a lot of time to talk about that, to uh, do deep dives into those players. Uh, and we'll make sure to help you out here on the Cavs on the break NBA podcast. But right now, just for a few moments, uh, let's talk about the state of the NBA right now. We have, four franchises who are pretty foreign to championships who uh, a lot of kind of smaller market teams and you can't see, but I did air quotes we have the Suns <laughs> and the clips. We have the Hawks and the bucks 
Um, most people probably know the Clippers and the Bucks because they're at least talked about in the playoffs a lot. Um, but the Suns and the Hawks out of obscurity, all of a sudden really threatening to have a Phoenix Atlanta NBA finals. Um, and, and the Hawks just beat the Bucks Eastern Conference game one, and they beat the 76ers in round two, the number one seed. And Ben Simmons has been the topic of so many conversations, so much talk radio, so many fake trades. And uh, this just in, by the way, Chase, he just missed two more free throws in the gymnasium. (laughs) While we were talking there, he was practicing. He missed two more free throws as he was working on his uh, free throw percentage of 34% in the playoffs. Hey, I'm not talking about free throw percentage, but um, he didn't miss a shot in the fourth quarter of game seven. So I'm going to say he didn't miss a jump shot because he didn't take Uh, one in the fourth quarter. That's why. (laughs) 100% Hundred percent, the fourth quarter of Game Seven. Um, Sam, would would you trade for Ben Simmons? Now, now, Kenny, I want to mind you. We did a whole episode last year of the yeah. this possibility of Ben Simmons um, on the Cavs, and I was pretty bullish then, and uh, I I'm still pretty bullish now. Sam, it seems you you would entertain Ben Simmons on the Cavs. Well. Last year, I would have, when we talked about it, I think I was probably a lot more excited about that possibility than mm-hmm. than after than having watched him play in the playoffs. Um, first of all, the guy is, you know, probably the best wing defender in the NBA. Okay, let's start there. He obviously Still. can score. He can do, uh, distribute. Great passer. But in today's NBA for all that money that he's going to be making in this contract and you can't shoot, <laughs> you, he can't be your number one option. He just can't. Right. And if you're going to pay a guy like a number one option, then you, then you really need him to be um, the things, you know, the things you do like about him is his defense is all world. Um, there's not, like I said, not a better perimeter defender in a league that really, really needs perimeter defenders. He's got great quickness. Uh, he can lock guys down. He can block shots. He, he does it all defensively. Um, but offensively, it would be a lot to, unless you could give up like Kevin Love and, and you know, nothing, virtually nothing else. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them much else than Love which sounds ridiculous, but I really wouldn't um, only because it's, it's, and I know the Cavs, you know, the Sixers were the number one seed in the Eastern conference for a reason. And the Cavs are winning 20, 19, 22 games every year for a reason. But uh, it's just, if you're going to build around a guy, which is what you would be doing, you, you, you can't say, okay, we're going to build around this guy who cannot make free throws. He cannot make jumpers. Um, and it's not gotten any better, you know, and he, he, he's a great number two, but if he came to Cleveland, he, he's better than anybody on the Cavs roster. Don't get me wrong. He'd be the number one guy. And that would be the problem. That would be the problem is not only is our number one, but he's going to be our number one for a while because he's, you know, he signed for what another four years after this, and the four last year that deal, thirty-five million dollar average over the next four years, and as right. you were going to say before I interrupt you, forty million dollars in that fourth year, Sam. Right, and that's 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 a guy who is your number one because of that kind of salary for for the rest of his time in Cleveland, and I just to me, I think that Ben Simmons is going to get traded. And I think he's going to get traded somewhere and they're going to be real happy with him because he's in a better situation. But I don't think that Cleveland would be the ideal situation for him. I do think that the Cavs can take a look at some other young guys who are going to be available this summer um, and and really consider that. You won't have to mortgage the farm for them. And if you did, they might be a better a better choice. I'm not saying Brandon Ingram's going to be one of those guys, but if you, if, if he was the part of this conversation, then I would say yes, because he's also better than anybody on the Cavs roster and he's not going to bury you, you know, where Ben Simmons has the potential to be like, you know, you're, you're only going to hit a certain ceiling with Ben Simmons and you're not going to be able to bring in a decent number two guy, unless that guy's like Garland or somebody on the current roster. Um, but 
I'll say this, you know, I mean, he'll meet, he would immediately create some buzz. He would sell a bunch of jerseys and you would definitely win more games, but I just don't know that it would be worth the cost. I, I, I don't feel like Ben Simmons would be worth the cost for the Cavaliers. I, you know, somebody like Minnesota or somebody, he's going to go there, those kind of places and he'll shine. But I just don't think it would be a great idea for the Cavs. If he's your third offensive option, then yeah. And, and you sure. can afford the salary. Then that's a, that's a good fit. Hey, as much as I, I, I rag on his offense and that, Guy's a three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA first-team defense, was a Rookie of the Year in 2018, so there is some talent there. But as Sam uh, astutely pointed out, you're looking for that number one guy. And Ben Simmons, I'm sorry, is not a number one guy. To me, he's a three or four that's overpaid, but you'll accept that if you have two stars in front of him and less pressure is on him offensively. All right, so here's what needs to happen. I'm going to concede that the Cavs will draft Jalen Green because in this scenario, this is what I do. Cavs draft Jalen Green. Woo, we have our uh, shot maker. We have our outside threat. We have our um, this team's Devin Booker, right? Um, And then we package Kevin Love, Colin Sexton, and a second-round pick to the 76ers for Ben Simmons. That's my mm. offer. Okay. I, w- I want to hear what Kenny has to say about that. I would not be against that. You so, get Jalen Green, Darius Garland, Ben Simmons, Okoro, Okoro and Jared, Jared Allen. Allen. And where That's does Ben Simmons play? Go. Is he the point guard? Where does he Garland play, is... no. play well, power where... forward? Power for you put him at power. His Heck best yeah. trade is power what? Passing. Forward. The, the, but he doesn't he uh, isn't he more effective when the ball is in his hands passing the, the basketball? He's most effective on defense, getting steals and running a break. Okay. And so my option are Jalen Green, one, Garland, two, and Okoro, three. Then they and- would only be one year behind the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. All right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I'd have to do a deep dive into that, Chase. Then maybe I consider that. Uh, but again, what scares me is the four years, 140 million left on us. God, we're, we're all complaining about Kevin Love's contract. No, no this guy's making more than no. Kevin Love, and you've got him this, for two more years than I, what I, you would have Kevin Love. It's such an insult to compare like a Ben Simmons situation <laughs> to to Kevin Love. Um, I don't know. I it's exciting. You you defense in the NBA is hard to find. Um, and in the draft, it's a shot in the dark. You never know if they're going okay. to develop. You need players like they were the, the Sixers were the number one defensive team in the league. Uh, and where are they tonight, Chase? They, they're they're, they're the with place where we are. Where we are, right? <laughs> Watching Cancun, uh, Atlanta beat Milwaukee, <laughs> right? Okay, I'm just just throwing that out there. Too. Yeah. Okay. All I know is y- y- why? Why? A- because Atlanta can shoot the three a little yep. bit better. You know. Right. Yeah. And, but- and Ben doesn't want to shoot. Okay. All right. I I looked at a team like the Sixers and I thought, man, Sexton would, would thrive there. You have Thibel, you have Embiid, you have Toby. And I just felt like it just, it makes sense to me. I would do it. I think that's an incredible team. Um, You have a lot of versatility on the, on the wing and you draft Jalen green, you trade Sexton and love to the end of second round pick to the Sixers for Ben Simmons. You call it a day and okay. you play in the parade for 2024. Let's oh, go. Wow. Look, let's he's, go. He's playing 2024. <laughs> hey, if okay. we're, if we're <laughs> here's again, if I could afford him as my third or fourth option, then I might consider him, but that's the only way. And, and here's why Sam, I, I got to watch Michael kid Gilchrist work out at Beachwood High School before he was going to get drafted. He played on that Kentucky National Championship team with AD, right? Uh, And uh, I I watched him make like 15 jump shots in a row at at Beachwood High School against nobody and that hitch in his jump shot, right? And I'm thinking, man, okay, they're going to fix that. He's going to be fine in the NBA. Well, guess what? He was known for his defense. Uh, The shot never got fixed. He's more of a role player. Now, uh, it's an insult to compare him to Ben Simmons overall game because Michael Kidd Gilchrist was never that good. Okay. But still my point is offensively, they never fixed Gilchrist shot. And I don't know if you can fix Ben Simmons shot, uh, you know, to, to where the teams aren't going to just back off of him and dare him to shoot. And he becomes a liability or isn't even in the game in the final two minutes when it's on the line. The hope is, and Sam, I want to get, get your 
thoughts on this. The hope is this turns into a Markel, Markel Fultz situation who went to Orlando, had a new setting, and now he's a contributing player on the Magic. Uh, and yeah. w- when I'm watching the Hawks 76ers game and Ben Simmons passes up a wide open layup, not once, but numerous times. I mean, that's that's not basketball. He is so far in his head. You draft a player like this, you 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 buy low, right? I mean, they're not going to sell low, but it's not like they're not wanting to trade. How are you buying low at $35 million a year? Because he's worth more than that. Come on now. Oh, let me man. let me let me just chime in here. I, I think that I think that he has a lot a lot to offer. Um, but <clears throat> again, you are in a situation. First of all, I would love the Cavs to be worried about. Oh, we can't put Ben Simmons in for the last two minutes or any player <laughs> because they're never in games at the last two minutes anymore. <clears throat> but um, I think my opinion of this is he would be a short term kind of fix. Hmm. And I don't even know if I want to say the word fix. He, he would be somebody that you would be excited about for a year or two. And then after that, you hope to get good again and you hope to be good again and you hope to be in playoff games. And in those situations, we saw what he just delivered, which wasn't anything to be to write home about offensively. So you have to keep that in mind when you're rebuilding and you're developing a team. Okay. This guy, when we get good again, is probably going to be a hindrance offensively and, and we're going to be paying him out the wazoo. And I just think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a too big of a risk to take when you're in a situation like the Cavs are unless chase it plays out like you kind of laid it out there. Then I would certainly, I would certainly think about that if I'm the Cavs. If you they can call get me Nostradamus, what's that? They call me Nostradamus. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. Well, I mean, in that situation, I would be very open to that, and I would think that Ben Simmons could be part of a long-term thing. Um, but you know, uh, it's it, it's it, there's a there's a big risk there, and it's it's. The money is the big risk. I've know, got because... myself so hype in this hypothetical that I need to calm down and realize that it's that's a pipe dream. But I see it, and I would love – and that, that's putting a lot of expectation on Jalen Green. Uh, Kenny seems uh, seems to be that Jalen has the shoulders to handle it. And, do you uh, have your Do you have your phone with you right now, Chase? Is your phone uh, by you I, for this podcast? I want to say no because I don't know what you have. This look check your your, your uh, text message. I just sent you a picture, and this is from June sixteenth, two thousand sixteen. I sent you a, a photo I took in the bowels of uh, then. Uh, what would it be? Quicken Loans Arena. Now it's yeah. Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I just sent you a photo, and, yeah. and for our listeners out there, I think you'll get excited once you uh, you, you get the photo and you you see who that is. Because if you're that in love with um uh, with Ben Simmons' game and everything, then feel free to use that in any way, shape, or form on the Press Play Podcast Networks uh, for uh, a photo. <laughs> if indeed the the Cavaliers do acquire Ben Simmons in a trade, all right? He uh yeah, the, you want to explain the picture? He he was there. Um, uh, I, I'm guessing Sam, maybe because of rich Paul, right. Isn't that his yeah. agent, rich Paul? So yep. he yep. might've been there at that time, uh, you know, in, in 2016, uh, taking in the game, maybe looking for representation or whatever it was, but he was in attendance at, at the Cavs game, uh, in the finals that year. And I, I took a picture of him because, uh, he was supposed to be the number one overall pick in the, in the draft and uh, a big, bright future ahead for him. So I'm like, got to get a picture of this guy. You never know when you're going to use it. So Chase, I sent it to you in case it does happen. <laughs> Feel free to use it. Sam, I will send it to you too oh, for hoopswire.com right now. So yeah. you can use that in case it happens for both of you guys. I appreciate that. Well, <clears throat> I'll say this, he, you know, there is that rich Paul connection that, that yeah. he does have rich being obviously from Cleveland, uh, Ben Simmons, obviously, having worked out in Cleveland, Garfield Heights High School, um, you know, and and Rich Paul, of course, representing Darius Garland. So there is kind of that little connection. I It won't mean much. I know that people say, well, look, Rich Paul built the Lakers. Um, that's not necessarily true. He just 
represents a bunch of guys who who uh, happen to want to play for the Lakers. So, <laughs> you know, it, it could it, but it's something to think about. I, I think that the Cavs will think about it. My guess is they'll end up walking away, you know, from a Ben Simmons potential Ben Simmons trade. But I think I think they'll the guy's available and he's an all star and he's the best wing defender in the league. And he just had a terrible showing in the playoffs. Um, you know, you you can't you can't define a guy by that, but it does tell you it does tell you something, especially when you're talking about the kind of money that that he's going to be making here soon. Just like Paul George, guys. Paul George, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. I I wouldn't want Paul George now. No. Uh, I did when LeBron was here. I thought it would have been a good fit then, but yeah. uh, what's the track record on Paul George? Can't win the big game, right? And he came back from that horrific injury, but there he was at the free throw line to ice the game last night or at least force Phoenix to make a three to tie it, and he missed not one but both free throws. Um, I know he made a couple of shots prior to that, but some guys just have that uh, you know, label on them as, uh, you know, not being able to to be a closer, to, to finish it when it matters. And Paul George is one of those guys, and well, I'll give him this much credit. At least he shot the ball. Ben Simmons didn't even want to shoot the ball in that game, which yeah. uh, was mind boggling to me. But hey, for Ben Simmons, I hope he's able to figure it out and turn it around because he does have talent defensively and passing the basketball. He could become a heck of an all around player if he figures out how to shoot. But I don't know if he's ever going to do that. One final thing before we close here. Uh, Kenny, since you're the guest, I'll ask you first. Uh, your matchup finals prediction and, and the champ. Well, let's see. At the beginning of the year, I picked uh, who did I pick coming out of the East? I picked the Nets in the East and I had the Lakers in the West. So I'm over <laughs> two uh, with uh, those teams, right? So uh, scratch both of them off. I thought Milwaukee was going to win game one tonight. Well, Trey Young went for 48. So they're up one game to none. Um, Chris Middleton, if he's not on, Milwaukee. Uh, lacks the scoring. I'm not a big holiday fan. And they, they picked him up and uh, you know, he had a decent game tonight. So uh, they need Middleton as much as they need on at the combo. Um, and if Middleton, who was terrible tonight, doesn't rise to the occasion, the Atlanta Hawks could be in the NBA finals uh, playing. I think it's going to be the Phoenix suns. They're getting Chris Paul back. So I'm going to go suns bucks in seven to get there. Uh, to the finals, and I'm taking the Suns to win it all. Love it. Sam, what you got, my man? Well, I have the same two teams going to the finals that Kenny did. I think the majority of NBA fans picked the Nets and the Lakers for this super team matchup. Um, yep. So I, I was also over for two. <clears throat> Listen to this, okay? Atlanta Hawks have never won an NBA championship the last time they went was 1961 when they played home games in St. Louis. Wow. Was I wasn't St. even Louis. born, Sam. That's how old that, that alone that's been. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think back then the sports writers were filing their stories with chisel and granite. Um, <laughs> okay, so the Atlanta Hawks, you talk about 1961. The Phoenix Suns, 1993, their last finals appearance. The Milwaukee Bucks, 1974, their last finals appearance. And the Los Angeles Clippers have never been. Um, it's amazing. And the last time any of those teams won a title, only one of them has, and that would be the Bucks when they had Kareem in 1971. So <clears throat> this, I told Kenny this earlier on WHBC. Now's the time if you're the Cavs to get good because this thing's wide open. Yeah. Right. Don't don't tell everybody, oh, it's going great and we're going to be good in five years. Do it now. Yeah. Find a way to become. And Competitive because the Atlanta Hawks are showing showing everybody that if you come together, you got your star and young and you come together, you can you can make a run at this thing. And I'm yeah. not saying the Cavs are going to be championship ready anytime soon. If I can interject, I, I saw a stat that uh, TV viewership is up 39 percent from last year with these small market teams. So it's right. Not no, that, that market size matters. doesn't it yeah. doesn't matter anymore. It really yeah. doesn't. And people always say, well, this guy doesn't want to go play in Cleveland or he doesn't want to go play here. It's like, that's baloney. The San Antonio Spurs, you know, well, the Golden State Warriors were terrible for years. They weren't looked at as a good market. And then all of a sudden, Kevin Durant joins, you know, so you build something 
people are going to come. It doesn't matter what market you play in. The San Antonio Spurs were in San Antonio. And look at all they did in the early yeah. 2000s, all the way up until, you know, five, six years ago. So I, I just think this is the Cavs. If you're the Cavs, now is the time to strike. And what we see in this final four is, is really showing you that. Now, that said, back to the question at hand, I'm going to go with the Bucks and the Suns and the Suns winning it in six. Um I'll tell you this. I'd kind of like to see the Hawks do it, though. And I like the Bucks, but I just like I would like to see the Hawks kind of keep this storybook season going. Would they be the first team ever to get to the finals with an interim coach? Probably. <laughs> you know, I, th- I think. Wasn't Ty Lu wasn't Ty Lu an interim coach, or did they no, name him? No, he got him? the job full time when they. They hired did. Him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. For David so, Blatt, halfway yeah. through. I think I think I think this would be a first. So it'd kind of be cool. I love Nate McMillan. I always have. I never understood that decision by the Pacers. Um, so and here's another bit of trivia that I learned today. Speaking of the Pacers, they have not had a single digit draft pick since 1989. Wow. They've, they've drafted 10 or lower every year since 1989. And Kenny, do you know who they took with that number seven pick in 1989? I'm going to take a wild guess. Okay. Um, and I don't, was he a pacer or not? I'm going to say, was it Rick Smith's? No, he, I, I, I think he was, I think he was two, but okay. he went before that. Okay. Um, was that <clears throat> left shrimp on their team? <laughs> he was, but he, he wasn't drafted by them. I don't. All right. Know. I'm over two. Was- uh, give me one more shot. Uh, let's I could see. Give, I could give you a hint and you'll get it. Okay, go ahead. Smith was 88. 88. Okay. Okay, here's your hint, Kenny. John Battle once chased him through the uh, depths, the, through the, through the, uh, near the locker room with a two by four uh, at the old Richfield Coliseum. The Cavaliers guard John Battle chased yeah. this player with a two by four, <laughs> looking Jeez. to fight. Looking to fight. Looking to yeah, I remember the two. And I'm trying to. Okay, uh, Chuck Person. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, no, George, George McLeod. Oh, George wow. McLeod. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. That's yeah. the last time they had a single digit draft. Wow. Good yeah. Well, that explains some of their problems. You know. Well, so they're, it, they're they're guys have had ten and like twelve their wheels. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Well, hey, real quick, and thanks for having me on, guys. And just real quick, because I see LeBron in the background there, Chase, yeah, uh, in your yeah. uh, dojo. And, and don't forget our Lord and Savior, uh, J.R. Smith. Yeah. Smith. I see him there as well. Can you believe, guys, it's been five years since they won the championship? Mm. It was just the other day. We celebrated on the Kenny uh, and JT show on WHBC. Five, five years ago, the Cavaliers won an NBA championship. Fifth anniversary. Amazing, oh, isn't it? Yep. Unbelievable. All right. So my. Uh, We're going to wait at least another five, five more. So <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> No, listen, I don't believe in the Bucks. I don't believe in Giannis. I don't believe in, most importantly, Coach Bud. And so I don't think they're going to beat Atlanta. Uh, I don't think they can win for the next six games against Atlanta. I think uh, Trey Young is too good. I think their support t- uh, is too good. Their defense is too good. And Coach McMillan is too good. I'm going to go Hawks and uh, Clips. And I'm going to say Clips in six. Whoa. If the well, clips pretty, get, much guar- pretty much guarantees a Buck Suns final. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, unless Kawhi Leonard comes back, and that's a big if at this point. If they had Kawhi Leonard, I might go a, a different mm-hmm. direction. But the fact that uh, he's out at least for Game Three, and CP3 is supposed to come back for Game Three, that's why I I think the Suns are, are going to get this done in in five or six games. I just feel like being contankers. I love the Suns. I love Book. I love their story. I would have a ton of fun if they won, but I I just can't. Uh, I just, I don't know, wanted to be different. And I think the Clips, why not? It's not that they're a bad team. I mean, they're missing maybe one of the best five players in the NBA. But uh, if he comes back and PG gets a little, I don't know, redemption story. I, I kinda, <laughs> Yeah, you're really reaching there, buddy. <laughs> really reaching, really reaching. Uh, well, uh, hey, hey, really quick, really quick. Uh, and I just need a yes or no or an answer. Uh, Sam, would you have rather have Trey Young or Luka Doncic right now? I'd rather have Trey Young. Kenny? Look where he is and look where Luka is. I would rather have Luka Doncic. I think mm-hmm. uh, Trey Young and the Hawks are benefiting from some injuries in the Eastern Conference uh, that got them uh, you know, to the point that they're at. Um, but both are obviously all-star caliber players. I'd take either one on the Cavaliers. What another fascinating wrinkle to that 
crazy yeah. trade and that really, really impressive draft. We're cutting to see Aiton said that it's the best draft in history, the, the 2018 draft. Did you see him say that? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Uh, go back to when LeBron was drafted, and and I'm then talk to me said, after man. that. Okay. I don't agree with that, but he's... we already we mentioned four of the 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 four of the five are going to be Hall of Famers in the top five picks that year. Feeling himself. Well, hey, that does it for this episode of Cavs of the Break NBA Podcast. Thank you all so much for downloading and listening. Shouts to the Press Play Podcast Network for making this possible. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Cavs on the Break. Follow Sam on Twitter at Amico Hoops. Catch all of his works and writings at HoopsWire.com. Uh, and Kenny, thanks for joining us, man. You can catch Kenny on uh, the Kenny and JT show, the Red Guy and Roto podcast here on Press Play, and his uh, Browns and Buckeye post game show. Kenny, thank you so much, sir. Glad, uh, glad to be with you guys. Sam, thanks for coming on our show. I owe you about a hundred more. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, Sam, any final thoughts before we kick it to Mike Breen? That's it. I think that we will have an exciting summer of speculation with the Cavaliers. I have no doubt. And you can read all about it on hoopswire.com as well as our riveting conversations that we will have leading up to the draft. Right. Hey, we're going to catch you guys again with the draft preview and then we'll, we'll catch you guys uh, for the draft. Mike Breen, take us out. Congratulations, Cleveland. Your decades long wait is finally over. The Cavaliers are NBA champions.